We know it's not West Philadelphia born and raised on the playground where we spent most of the... All right. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, here we are. Bel Air, episode six and seven. I make you guys wait because I do these in pairs. If I made uh, Mrs. Mrs. E. Temple Cooey sit there and watch Bel Air with me, and she caught up on it because she watched the original Fresh Prince of Bel Air show much the same way I did when we were growing up because we both liked it. Uh, so... I said, I'm going to take very brief notes. I'm not going to get the backup computer out. And uh, as I'm sitting here, I'm thumbing through the pages uh, that I wrote, hand wrote. And we've got, what, uh, one, two, three. Two hours later. Four, five, six. six. We got around six, around six pages. Jeez. <laughs> what a surprise. Of, of notes that I, that I wrote for this. Because I, I can't just I can't just do anything normal. I have to be extra. Uh, episode six was titled "The Strength to Smile." The strength to smile. Now uh, we have Trey. The fallout from Trey's visit, right? They had their their falling out, and here we see uh, on the screen is the picture that Will sees on social media as you know Hillary. I think it was Hillary said he was getting roasted on social media. Boom roasted was this picture here on instagram with him and trey and of course trey was pissed because will decided to stay in bel-air and not come back to philly you know he he feels be <laughs> betrayed ha ha no no pun intended not a dad joke that's the very the very beginning and he's kind of pouting as he's going through the house and uh he, he bounces a basketball and it breaks a vase and uncle phil wants to take him to his office he's got to have a talk with him this is actually a nice moment here because, you know, uh, Uncle Phil kind of brings Will in, you know, give me a hug, give me a hug. And he tells him that everyone in the house can't walk on eggshells around him because he and Trey had that falling out. They need him to help with the fundraiser as well, which is going on, you know, later on, which it's the fundraiser for uh, Lisa's mom who passed away. I believe it was, was it leukemia or something? that she had. I, I, I'd have to look back at my notes, but I don't really feel like it, to be honest with you. You have AIDS. Yes, you have AIDS. I hate to tell you, boy, that you have AIDS. But the fundraiser is for her uh, mom, and she has a speech to give. So we have, gives him a hug, and it, it's a very nice scene, and it's Hillary's, of course. She's at the influencer house, and she's dealing with the Black Ass Brothers, and no, I'm not being... <laughs> I'm not being an asshole. That's literally what they're called. As you can see over on the right side, the Black Ass Brothers, because they pull stunts and then one of them will inevitably uh, take his pants off and show his ass. So they come in and they're kind of messing with her while she's trying to do a video. Viv's lamenting the fact that she needs help catering the event later this evening because the caterers canceled on them. Now, you'll see this will be a running theme through the next couple episodes when it regards things to coming uh, with the campaign because Phil is losing some of his support and his backers and donors because of his stance uh, fundraiser event he had where you know he came out in favor of defunding the police and you know standing up against the police which I mean let's be honest what he said wasn't really that the only okay the defund the police thing we know that's a bullshit false narrative every city from dating back to the summer of love in 2020 that was defund the police defund the police has now refunded the police because the uh, crime statistics skyrocketed you know uh, personal assault crimes property crimes skyrocketed so they got sick and tired of their cities being you know turning into you know hell holes much the same way so they decided to refund the police and have put more money into policing the community and stopping these criminals from doing criminal things. That are alive, you are coming with me. People that were supporting Phil Banks, Philip Banks, now have pulled their money out because they don't want that to happen in LA. You know, and it's kind of funny because they really, sh they really focus on the, the racial paradigm of that and that is a big part of the dichotomy. It's disingenuous to say that black people don't want safe communities. 
and they know there has to be some kind of policing done. And the majority of them, I'm sure, are of the mindset that, yeah, not all law enforcement is bad. Of course there's assholes. I mean, what, what stemmed the whole summer of love thing, that was a police officer who was a literal piece of shit, and he deserved to be in prison. He deserved more than that, but, you know, the justice system, we have to let that work. I know it's flawed, but I don't want to get too far off tangent here. But so, long story short, that's the crux of why Phil and Viv are having issues with people helping with the campaign now. And that will that issue, the financial issue, will come up later on uh, in Episode 7. Uh, Lisa shows up, and her and Will exchange glances because, you know, they're still under that deal with Carlton to where Will will stay away from, he's agreed to stay away from Lisa, so that doesn't cause any more friction as Carlton's trying to get back with her. Lisa's not interested in Carlton that way, so this, you know, that problem will eventually come to a head here. You know, Carlton will probably make a move on her at some point, and she's going to have to deal with that because, well, let's be honest, that you kind of took them and let him on, you know, based on the fact that you guys had history they had dated before, but, you know, she doesn't want to be mean because she knows Carlton's hurting, whatever, whatever, anxiety, yada, yada. And, you know, here we are with this, you know, kind of triangle. Oh, my God. Who the hell cares? With Carlton, Lisa, and Will, with, you know, Lisa and Will, they'll be, you know, kind of sneaking around on the fly here. Hillary is getting pressured by Kylo that, boy, I think his name's Kylo or some sh I don't know. The character's so stupid. He's... <laughs> What did you say? Uh, he's the producer and uh, runs the influencer house. And she hasn't posted anything. So, you know, he is pressuring her. you got to post something because you're going to lose, what do you say, a 30% or a third of your subscribers or your followers if you don't post anything. But, you know, I mean, when you get to that level, I mean, she has like 70,000 followers on YouTube or Instagram, the grams. They... Do people actually call it the gram? Like, is that a thing? Is that a thing, or is that just like this? The white people that write this show, like trying to sound hip. I, I don't, because that's basically what it sounds like to me. He was a retard. So Hillary's got to come up with some kind of post for her social media presence, or she will lose her following, and white Kylo will be pissy. All right, Lisa and Carlton are rehearsing her speech or her words or poetry for the fundraiser that evening, and she has a moment of sadness because this is dealing with the death of her mother, which she lost very young. And Will, you know, sees them holding hands, which he thinks at this point that she is getting back together with Carlton because the way Carlton describes their interactions, it, it's it's kind of a trope because he's resorted to the like cold shoulder treatment of Lisa, which I mean we all know that never works, and it always comes off as disingenuous to you know where the characters in universe can always get some inclination that something's you know amiss. There's something not right. And that's kind of a sign of good writing, you know, that they're not just completely oblivious to it. But like I said, it's all in the writer's intent. Nonetheless, is kind of disheartened by this, you know, as, as he thinks Carlton and uh, Lisa are going to, you know, reunite their, their couplehood. Uncle Phil tells Hillary and Ashley he lost the LA Times campaign endorsement. I'm gonna cry. And as I said before, he, this is kind of a running theme throughout these two episodes. I don't remember asking you a goddamn thing. Our issues with the Philip Banks campaign, uh, financially or otherwise, you know, uh, the other small snags coming up, uh, you know, obstacles, stones in the road as they were. Uh, we then cut out to Lisa and Will and they're having a quick conversation as Will is helping set up for the event later that night. And she is upset with him because he says, you know, you and Carlton are booed back up now. And she's like, well, you kind of misinterpreted that because I'm not into Carlton like that because his hairline goes back to the middle of his fucking forehead. You will never find, blom, 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 a hairline like mine. So Lisa's dad shows up at the fundraiser with and his new wife, Angela, show up at the fundraising event for Lisa's you know, deceased mom. This, now this storyline, didn't want to think I was reading too much into it. So I kind of asked my wife, she somewhat concurred that as we're watching, I was like, do you see them kind of just like taking shots at every white character in this show? The old series was not like, you kind of get that feeling that if she was not a white uh, woman in this role of uh, being with this influential black man, that she wouldn't be 
kind of you know look down on the way she is. She also has kind of a dark secret. Have a girl. Which, I mean, it's not really dark, but I mean, it, it happens uh, to 50% of marriages. But we'll talk about that when it comes up. Until then, you can pontificate on what you think happened. While Angela and Fred are talking to Viv and her friends, you know they kind of give him the look like, mm, he went and got him a snow bunny. Like that kind of shit. All right, so Ashley, remember Ashley, little Ashley, her potential crush shows up. I can't remember the girl's name. She's the, uh, the young lady there. And this, the boy thinks, I, he thinks he's in the running for Ashley's affection because he has a crush on her. She has a crush on the girl. And that, we're going to kind of see that unfold over the course of the next, you know, part of this episode here. Like I said before, making Ashley a lesbian, I don't know how old she's supposed to be, 12. I guess that would be, and I'm not against that if it's done right. And, and by that, I mean them you know accurate not to say that i know what an accurate portrayal of a coming of age story for a gay or lesbian child is but what i'm saying is it's it's handled with care and, and it's well written and it fits contextually into the story and i think that this does here because it's kind of that first crush scenario uh, that we see play out in so many of these shows. All right, so Carlton is talking to Aunt Viv's friends and everything gets very awkward every time that white Angela talks, especially when it comes to her pregnancy and going back to work because she makes a point to say that Fred is so supportive of her going back to work as soon as the baby's born. And Viv is of course pissy about this because she hasn't been to work in 15 years she has just been you know the mom and the wife and supporting her you know husband's career and taking care of the kid well she i mean she's got a jeffrey but jeffrey's not the butler in this one jeffrey's the house manager jeffrey's really conspicuous pretty much by his absence as phil sent him on a task earlier he makes like maybe one or two appearances during this episode but jeffrey being one of my favorite characters that really kind of took me out of this episode really uh, as far as it, my interest level went because I do. I like the character of Jeffrey. Now, he's not in it a lot, but he's usually in a little bit more than this episode. <laughs> ah, yes. And then Angela... <laughs> <laughs> and, and at this point, Angela really puts her foot in her mouth because uh, she's having a contentious moment with Aunt Viv. And Will kind of comes in and breaks the tension. A golf outing, she was like... Yeah, we, we this golf outing we went to, and she says, "Oh, have you ever been there?" Willie's like, "Oh, oh, you gotta go. It's really nice." She goes, "Fred won that tournament there, and he called me his good luck charm." And Viv was like, "Well, that was in 2018. Gail didn't die until 2019." And Angela has, well, this look on her face, <laughs> and she's like, "Ah, ah, ah, ah." <laughs> <laughs> I'm in danger. Kind of that, oh shit, now I look like a hoe moment. The white girl is a hoe. You know, she's a fucking hoe. She was in. Make even worse, she's banging Fred, chief of police for Los Angeles. You know, his wife is dying and he's out banging fucking Snow Bunny here, which really. <laughs> that didn't look good. It's not a good look, Fred. She. So let's move on here from uh, White Angela and her <laughs> just, ah uh, shit, I just admitted I was a fucking hoe, uh, facial expression. Yeah, let's go, let's go over here now. Reed, our buddy Reed from Barbershop fame, sees Viv's painting and implores her to enter her current work in the silent auction and he says, you know, he wants, he's got a space, we know he's got a space for her in his gallery and that's all that he has space for for her is in his gallery. Liar! I, I had to mention this to the wife, uh, Gar the the you know, the lady that plays Viv. Um, I swear to Christ, her voice sounds exactly like Craig's mom from Friday. And she's gonna be ashamed of herself coming out looking like that. Hey, girl! So I cannot get that out of my head now. Every time she talks and hits a certain pitch with her voice, all I hear is Craig's mom from Friday, and I'm like, oh Jesus. It just takes me right out of it. Uh, so anyway, Reed says, make me a deal. If your painting sells for 15,000, come down to the gallery, exhibit your work, use the space I gave you, you ungrateful tart. <laughs> Pay that shit. She's, you know, Viv's on the fence about it. She wants to, you can tell Viv wants to do this, but at the same time, it's kind of like, everybody betrayed me. I fed up with this world. 
course, Uncle Phil walks in. Wow, they're kind of, I mean, they're not like getting ready to kiss or anything, but it was like they were in a close proximity, you know, Reed kind of invaded the personal space of Viv a little bit, I would say. This is his look here as, you know, Uncle Phil comes in and introduces himself, obviously. Sit your five dollar ass down before I make change. Over there, you can tell he doesn't, he doesn't like Reed. This is his, this is his legal mind working now. He's looking at this guy's angle and obviously it's like you, he thinks, you know, you probably want to bang my wife. <laughs> You know, let's not split hairs here. This this guy's kind of fucking sleazy. I mean, he might have feelings for Viv, but still he knows, you know, she's a married woman and, you know, he should probably respect the sanctity of their marriage. But, you know, Viv is kind of buying what he's selling because deep down she wants to get back into the art world. And I'm not saying that she's buying into his, you know, attempts to woo her more as to get her career back going again because, you know, she's been out of the game for years. All right, so here we have Will and Lisa and she's... You know, she's crying because she's obviously, she misses her mother very much. Uh, you know, it's very hard. She was, you know, a teenager and losing her mom at such a young age. Uh, and she's going through a lot with, you know, the, the dad and stepmom situation now. Carlton, unbeknownst to, uh, unbeknownst to Will and Lisa, hears Lisa say that she's having trouble enough navigating her own emotional uh, messes and problems without trying to navigate his shit as well and Carlton hears this and you know he doesn't take this too well really weighing on him because that's the thing with with Carlton is Carlton really does like Lisa we're, we're starting to see a little more character development with this iteration of Carlton which isn't a bad thing he needed to be fleshed out a little more so he just doesn't look like the pretentious rich asshole but so carlton over here is uh will and lisa's conversation is she's you know like i said she's talking about not wanting to walk on eggshells around him because his bullshit here we have a very emotional scene where ashley and her two friends that we met you know the the potential uh, her potential paramour as it were and the uh, other young boy they're playing pinball you know and they're uh she ashley asks uh, him to get them some sodas he goes and gets them some sodas and she decides this is the point they start talking to uh, her her girl here we, we get the uh, rejection here of ashley because her friend is into will and she's like he has so much flags these at one point uh so ashley is just dejected oh son of a bitch who hasn't had a crush like your first crush and maybe it was unrequited uh, and, you know, you got rejected this way, too. I, I remember I did, but, you know, I was a fucking nerd. So next we go over back to the art exhibit here, and we see um, Reed Roderick, uh, art guy, writing down a bid of 15000 in the silent auction for Viv's painting. So... Phil, of course, is watching this guy. Look. So Reed, of course, he walks away. Phil walks over, and he goes, Oh, yeah? Fifteen grand for my wife's painting. You fucking cockroach. All right, here, hang on. Here's 20 grand. So he bids 20 grand on it. Why? 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 Uh, you're having campaign financing issues, and you get in a dick measuring contest with some guy, so you're just like, fuck it. I'm going to drop 20 grand on my wife's painting, which isn't even that fucking good. It's the same fucking painting basically she does every time. It's just little black kids with no faces. That's it. That's what the painting is. I'm not fucking joking. Like every piece of art of hers that we've seen has been like some faceless black person. I get it. It's it's a metaphor. I, I understand. I'm I'm make, being facetious, facetious, making a joke uh, because it's very fucking weird. And like honestly, the paintings aren't that good. I'm not joking about that. They're just not. It's like somebody in the fucking set department was like, "Hey, uh, paint these. Make it look like a five year old did it." And then adults will look at it and be like. Oh my, this speaks to the, you know, whatever. And that's basically what it is, pretentious art shit. So Phil, like I said, Phil drops 20 Gs. On Viz painting, because he doesn't want to get cucked out. But seriously, the Uncle Phil's not gonna let this dude cuck him out. He's like, nah, homie, you're not buying my wife's shit. If anybody's gonna buy my wife's shitty painting of faceless black kids, I'm gonna fucking buy it. Now we have Hillary consoling Ashley over her first heartbreak and Hillary offers some sage words of advice to her little sister, you know, tells her you're a queen, slay queen, yes, 
and all that happy horse shit. No, she gives her some, you know, sisterly advice, which at times coming from Hillary can seem like, okay, this could be good advice, but then you look at some of the decisions that Hillary makes and it's like, motherfucker, how are you giving life advice and expecting it to be good when you can't even handle your own business? Like, it doesn't make any sense. Will goes to find Carlton, and Carlton is, of course, in his walk-in closet that's as big as my fucking office. Well, actually, it's bigger than my office. But he's in there snorting some zannies, and Carlton snaps at Will, and then he breaks down crying in Will's arms, probably meaning that Will's going to have to stand in and give Carlton's part of the speech with Lisa. Uh, but Will says, I got you, you know... Don't be, uh, don't be sad. And like I said, this is this is kind of a nice character development scene for the Carlton character, uh, and it also really showcases how big this motherfucker's forehead actually is. <laughs> but seriously, this character needed more development. He needed to be fleshed out, and we get a whole bunch of things with him uh, over the course of these episodes, which is kind of cool. It's kind of nice to get get a little bit more into what actually makes Carlton tick and how he sees things and how he's perceived uh, by those around him because you know we obviously got at the beginning that he was kind of like the big you know the big man on campus but we're seeing the bricks kind of come out of the foundation of that as we go along here lisa is giving her speech and she talks about her mother and their shared love of poetry and how she would read poetry to her mom and then, you know, she goes to read a poem she wrote because she thought that would be more meaningful than reading somebody else's words. And she's absolutely right. I, I do like the character of Lisa. But as we expected, as I, I said earlier, Will would probably stand in for Carlton because Carlton is just a mess right now. You know, Carlton watches as they read the poem. They get a standing ovation. After the poetry reading, we get Aunt Viv and Snow Bunny getting into it again. She comes up, Angela comes up and hugs Lisa. And she goes, that's beautiful. I feel so moved. Uh, maybe I should give a toast and Viv's like bitch. We already told you honky. You ain't going up on stage and saying nothing uh, This isn't about you. Stop trying to uh, appropriate our fundraiser <laughs> And after Angela gets you know verbally smacked down by Viv Fred and Phil get into it and Fred we find out Fred is running against Phil for fucking DA now. This is outrageous It's unfair Phil is pissed that Fred entered the DA race. Fred's like, well, after your bullshit, you know, virtue signaling and grandstanding, uh, somebody had to do something. They're not friends anymore. <laughs> and that's why he's not, he's pulling funding and he's not supporting Phil. Which, honestly, if you think about it, uh, he seems like a very even keel guy. Uh, Phil threw his head in with the BLM crowd and, you know, he's now talking about defunding the police. Well, like I said, we saw how well that worked out in you know Minneapolis and all these other cities that wanted to be you know cute and defund the police it didn't work out that well so yeah he's like nah fuck this I'm gonna run for fucking DA and you know may the best man win Uncle Phil's like hey Jeffrey there's one more thing I need you to do I need you to look into this Roderick Reed and I think he's interested in more than Viv's art and Jeffrey's like I've been looking forward to this all right so Carlton wakes up with Uncle Phil sitting on the bed next to him and he's worried that his dad knew he was his dad says i know what's wrong it's anxiety kind of gives him some fatherly you know talk and you know it's nice but then he tells carlton that lisa's dad is running against him for da uh, viv and will at this point they're they're sitting down there talking about her loss of gail gail was like a sister to her that's lisa's mother that passed away and she correlates it to will and trey's falling out and once the passage of time comes, you know, maybe you guys can kind of reconcile or, or whatever. And now probably my favorite part of the episode, Hillary is going to have to do something, a post for her social media. Now, mind you, she's staying in the social media influencer house. Now, those of you familiar with, you know, reality television, which I've watched Big Brother and Survivor since the very beginning. Um, I've only recently quit watching Survivor because it literally went woke. Big Brother is more or less what I can correlate to this situation because you know the big brother house you're you're filmed 24 hours a day uh, multiple angles cameras everywhere except you know the showers uh, for obvious reasons in the toilet area with for obvious fucking reasons so hillary decides to make a creme brulee, uh, creme brulee wearing lingerie and well here let me do this because the smaller i am the better uh this actress she's 
I mean, she's gorgeous. She is absolutely gorgeous. Um, she's not Karen Parsons gorgeous, but she's beautiful nonetheless. So she decides this will be her post, you know, for her social media. Uh, that day, she'll make a creme brulee wearing lingerie, which rhymes. And for some reason, I think I've said it like three times. But mind you, there's all different angles in this. And Kylo, the evil, snarling white producer of this, has control over all the camera. So he can do whatever he wants with the footage. More! More! Uh, Lisa and Will, they're down at the pool. This is the end of the episode. They have a moment by the pool. Uh, they're discussing their feelings. It comes up that he wanted to step back. He didn't want to stress her out. He know, you know, they each have feelings for each other. And to sum it up, they kiss. And that's how we end episode six, The Strength to Smile of Bel Air. Uh, this episode was kind of slow, kind of boring. Not, we're getting to the conflict, you know, coming to a head with, you know, Will and Carlton over Lisa. And then we have uh, Roderick and Phil, you know, over Vivian. Uh, you know, I mean, it's not really a, a competition for, for Viv, but it's more or less the perception that Roderick is into her uh, from Phil's perspective, you know, it's his wife. So that was uh, episode six. Let's jump into episode seven. So, season one, episode seven, Bel Air, Payback's a bitch. Phil and Will and Lisa and Fred, we, we go back and forth between the two conversations in the beginning. And they're basically being told to stay away from each other until after the election. Well, then we see him making out, of course, because they, they, they come to the conclusion they have to figure out how to tell Carlton that, hey, uh, we're stooping. So, well, they haven't stooped yet. Phil is literally, he's just telling Will, hey, look, you might feel inclined to, you know, divulge secrets to Lisa, which can be used against me in the campaign, so motherfucker just don't. And Lisa's dad is just basically telling her, just stay away from him, uh, I don't like him. <laughs> so Hillary's video got uploaded and re-edited to look ultra sexy, and Hillary flips out about it, and she's talking to the sex influencer in the house, and she says, Kylo doesn't need permission. He owns the footage. He can do whatever he wants with it. And Hillary's flipping out and she says, well, after it's, it looks like porn and thought shit and black women are hypersexualized anyway. Yada, yada, yada. White, and then of course Whitey says, let's not shame sex workers. You are a toy! Uh, Phil and Vivian and campaign manager Steven are having a discussion about campaign finances. Donors pulling out, which means Phil's gonna have to put more of their money into the campaign, which he calls, you know, my money. And Viv gets all pissed off and asks Steven, how much money are you putting into it? He excuses himself, Vivian and Phil talk, and she finds out that he already used their money in the campaign, uh, in terms of financing the campaign. So she's pissed off about that, obviously, because she she says, did I ever have a say in it? And Shut up, bitch! All right, so back here at lacrosse practice with uh, Coach Whitey McWhiterson and Connor, who is... Uh, Where is it? Carlton's off his game at lacrosse, gets bumped down to the practice squad for the day, and Connor calls him out for being off his game and <laughs> says... He says to the rest of his friends right in front of fucking Carlton. Guess lacrosse is one sport they can't take from us. He's out of line, but he's right. So Carlton breaks his fucking wrist. <laughs> I can't blame him because that was a fucking dick thing to say and it was racist as fuck. You've got to do better. So yeah, I, I, I don't even blame him. This Connor is a piece of shit. You're both pieces of shit. Yeah, I can prove it mathematically. So Will has this plan because Carlton breaking Connor's wrist basically ostracized him from everybody uh, that he runs with normally his you know his friends you know they kind of look down on him now or whatever his perception is they he thinks nobody likes him which he's kind of being socially ostracized for it I guess it's school for standing up for himself which really doesn't make sense but anyway fuck it it's a show don't think too much about it so will says let's throw you a party I invited the basketball team and the cheerleading squad who you got Carlton's like the chess club and the debate team I was like all right well you know we'll work with it we'll work with it uh, Hillary tries to get Aunt Viv to help her with her Kylo situation Traitor! who uploaded the footage of her and edited it up to make it look like a porn and you know Hillary says I'm gonna talk to dad about it and have him take care of it and Viv says look if you do that, your fucking dad's gonna come in guns blazing and scare the shit out of him and, you know, spend spend all the money he has to to, you know, help his baby girl out. You need to do this on your own, basically. 
Uh, if you're trying to make your own way in the world because you kind of put yourself in this situation. Phil comes out and says, hey, honey bee, what do you need? And she's like, nothing, daddy. I got it taken care of. And she, you know, she pieces out. Viv informs Uncle Phil that she is going to San Diego for this art fair. And he's like, what the fuck you mean you're going for this art fair? The kids are having a party tonight. She's like, you got this. Uh, you got this. I'm going because I'm a strong, independent black woman who don't need no man, even though you paid all the fucking bills for the last 15 years, and I'm just a fucking painter who paints faceless black kids and tries to pass it off as fucking high art. Ha <laughs> ha! And that's when Jeffrey fucking shows up and he's like, I checked into that shit. I'm the world's greatest detective. Uh, Reed is going to that art fair too. Uh, you might want to get your ass up there and handle your business. So Reed meets Viv at this uh, art fair in San Diego tells her he's got a suite for her and he's lining up interviews for her. So part of it does look like it's business, but you can tell there's obviously something there. Will and Carlton are, you know, at the bank's residence. They're having the party. Kill Whitey! Meanwhile, at the Legion of Doom. So Reed is presenting Viv with this opportunity for an interview. Phil just shows up. Ah ha! And, and he's kind of throwing salt in Reed's game a little bit. Back at the bank's residence, Hillary is the adult in charge. Come on, don't bullshit me. She's policing the grounds. Jazz shows up and he says she's cracking the whip and then she tells him, You are one pathetic loser. Puts Reed on blast. It pisses Viv off. She can tell. You can see when they cut to Viv that she can tell Phil has done his homework on Reed. Phil like, yeah, you like to date women, don't you? And he's like, well, I, I am a single guy. He's like, yeah, up and coming artists too, all of them, huh? And he's like, and Viv is just like, motherfucker, did you have Jeffrey investigate? Like, do a background check on him. Like, Lisa shows up at the party, and her and Will are talking, and she kind of bemoans the fact that they have to stay on the low. And Will tells her he's playing matchmaker for Carlton, so he goes, we'll, we'll see, you know, how long we've got to do that, because I'm trying to take care of my man. Let's let's talk about this scene with Carlton and this girl. <laughs> So this this is the scene right here. We have Carlton and Aisha. You saw that they're watching the Carlton dance, and I told my wife when we were watching this, I said the best thing they could have done there was because it's like on TikTok. They should have had Alfonso Ribeiro be the guy doing the dance, and that would have been fucking that would have been fucking a chef's kiss. It would have been perfect. See Carlton doing the Carlton, and Carlton watching Carlton do the Carlton on TikTok, going, "Hey, you know that's my." And they're like, "That's my favorite dance move." She says to him. I'm glad you're cooler than your rep. And he says, what's my rep? She basically calls him an Uncle Tom. She says he likes yachting, lacrosse, and race cars. And you ain't black. Don't make an effort to get down with us, AKA the black students. And Carlton says, because I like what I like, I'm disqualified from being black? That is correct. And he gets up and he says, you know what, Aisha? Fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. Fuck you, I'm out. We're in the office now. Jazz and Hillary shoo a couple other teenagers out so they can sit down and make out there. And, you know, they're talking about they have to leave to go to Hollywood and confront Kylo and get him to take down this video, which Hillary doesn't like. She thinks it, you know, paints her in a bad light. That's not what she's trying to do with her image or her culture. So, which means she has to give up her duties as adult in charge of the party, which, you know, it could go one of two ways. He chose... Well, Phil and Viv are having an overly dramatic heart-to-heart -heart in the hotel room and he says, why don't we go for a drive down the coast? And she's like, no, nah, you can go home. Oh! Carlton has abandoned hope for reinvention, tells Will that, hey, look, I didn't get to go across the country and start over at a new school again and make a whole new group of friends. You know, people aren't going to buy into this. And Will's kind of like, oh, you know, he's sad by it. But, you know, at the same time, it's like Will's got more important things on his mind to a teenage boy, which would be his girl. Jazz and Hillary confront Kylo. <laughs> Jazz introduces himself and Kylo's like, Oh no, anyway. Look. Hillary really shows ass here because she ditches Jazz who drove her to Hollywood. She ditches him to go off and meet with Victoria's Secret reps who want to talk to her because they saw the video that Kylo uploaded of her in her lingerie. <laughs> So all of a sudden she's like, yeah, remember what I said about my morals and, and holler at this Victoria's Secret rep because Kylo's like, yeah, they're willing to pay you $15,000 a post. And she's like, oh shit, fuck my morals and, and walks away and, and Jazz is like, what? Lisa's talking to Will and he laments the Carlton dilemma and you know, what's wrong with Carlton. 
And she talks about, she goes, well, the microaggressions and racist comments that we face daily here in this community are exhausting. I can only imagine how he feels hanging around with those guys. Shut up, bitch! So Carlton gets a text from one of his friends, says, hey, I'm in your game room. Why don't you come down and hang out with us? Carlton's like, what? So he comes down there. His buddy John's there, and he sees Connor. And he's like, what the fuck are you doing here? Connor to apologize for all his Istin phobe comments. And Connor refuses, tells Carlton he's whack and leaves. Aisha, who earlier told Carlton, and you ain't black, kind of gives him the approving look now that he's confronted Whitey. Now Carlton, you know, I'm, maybe he can be black now. We'll have to ask Joe Biden though. And you ain't black. Meanwhile, in Will's room, him and Lisa hook up. Uh, back in Hollywood, Jazz is pissed at Hillary for what he calls selling her soul. She's like, what, what do you want? He's like, you know, I drove you down here for this. And she's like, oh, you want gas money? And he's like, as a matter of fact, yeah, you know, he, he does. Yeah, he gets the check and he drives her home. And, you know, he's basically pissed because he's, he, he sees that she's a clout chaser. <laughs> And of course, our last scene of the show would have to involve Connor saying there's going to be some new guests showing up. He texts Carlton and says this at your party. Enjoy. And Carlton is walking back upstairs and in come the police because he's been Carlton's been going around looking for Will and Lisa can't find him. He's like he looks up at Will's bedroom. He's like, so he's going up there to look. But this scene right here, how ham fisted can we get? Carlton, non-threatening Carlton comes walking down the stairs. The police said we need to speak to the owner of the house. Carlton comes walking down and he's like, hi, excuse me. Yeah, the guy that called you is just being an asshole. He goes, I'm sorry. You can see he's kind of going, he's got his hand, right hand is on the waistband, which is his, you know, his gun belt. And he's telling him, don't take another step closer. And Carlton, shut up, bitch. You're, you're not going to see some 17 year old kid come down and be like, yeah, it's my parents' house. It's some guy's trying to get back at me for something. And even though there is underage drinking going on, it was just, it was fucking like, oh, come on. So Carlton at this point, he's like, you know, you know what the writers are like? You're black, Carlton. Even the police don't see you the way you see yourself. He's out of line, but he's right. So, of course, Lisa comes downstairs. She tells Will, we got to do this. She says, I'm Lisa Wilkes, Fred Wilkes' daughter. And the guy's like, you're Chief Wilkes' daughter? And she's like, yeah, and he wants to talk to you, motherfucker. The cop takes the phone, talks for a second, and tells the boys, let's go. And they, you know, they tell everybody, you know, let's go, go straight home. And, and that's it. No charges are pressed. Carlton, though, sees Will come down the stairs. Gives Will the look, gives Lisa the look. Okay, then you give him the Forrest Whitaker eye. You can tell he's going, the next episode is going to be him being pissed at Will and Lisa. She is obviously, you know, shirts undone, which this whole thing makes me laugh. It's like, if you didn't want him to know, why didn't you just come downstairs and make it look like you're coming from the bathroom or something? Actually, you know, close your shirt up. <laughs> Logic be damned. Reasoning be damned. This isn't a show that... You know, invest heavily in logic and reason. This is Bel Air. And That's episode seven of Bel Air titled Payback's a Bitch. I wasn't a big fan of either of these episodes. They were very slow. You know, a little bit of identity politics in there. You know, a little bit of blame Whitey. You know, Whitey bad. Uh, I did like to see on the positive side, you know, we're getting some uh, character development for the Carlton character. Uh, Jeffrey continues to be my favorite character. Uh, because maybe they don't show too much of him. I don't know. No, I, I do like Jeffrey, though. Yeah, we get Phil being jealous and being dismissed by his wife. Lisa's dad, Fred, is married to a white woman who Lisa resents. And, you know, of course, she had to be verbally put in her place because she was a whore, basically, who Fred was hooking up with a year before his wife passed away. And how dare they even consider, you know, portraying a interracial relationship in a positive light on a show that you know obviously wants to make the white people look bad on the show, which it kind of it, it it works hard to do that. Like Kylo's a sleaze bag. Uh, Will's buddy that's on the basketball team with him is a straight up communist. Connor's a racist piece of shit. You know what are you gonna do? That that's how the fucktards that write this show see it. So you know whatever. It's their uh, it's their court. You know their ball. So I'm just kind of pointing it out. Like I said, I, I can still look past a lot of that if the episodes are good and say, you know, I, I dug this. There were some things that I dug. And, you know, I like the fact that Phil goes to bat for his woman, even though she fucking just tells him basically get fucked, go home. It's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off for him. It's not a great show. Again, like I said, it's, it's not a great fucking show. But that's it, gang. I'm out. Let me know what you think. Do all the YouTube things. Be sure to comment on the video. 
Uh, that helps us. every little bit of interaction helps with the algorithms, which is why we always ask you this, you know, share the video. Uh, also, don't forget to good slap that like button for me. And if you have not yet, please consider subscribing to the channel and ding the bell for notifications so you know we upload a new video or go live with one of our two, actually now four, weekly live streams. I'm Etep Okuyan of The Place to Be Reviews. I've been here with all of yous. If I don't see you, have a great day, a pleasant tomorrow. I'll catch you on the next one. And remember, shut up, bitch. I could do this all.